Greetings folks. I have a, a bit of a different video of, um, of stuff than usual. Usually for something like this I'd classify the latest finds, but this is something, uh, something truly unique. Um, stuff I've acquired about a week ago, but haven't been able to, uh, to get around to talking about until now. Uh, about uh, August 10th is whenever I acquired this lot. And this lot um, got the bag for free from the guy named Mike, whose grandfather was a big time um, down in Miami and up in Manhattan um, nightclubs and beats clubs men uh, who played piano and other things. I had um, had a small band of his own back in the 30s up through the 60s. He had the pianist. Uh, his name was. His stage name was Mickey O'Toole, but his real name was Sidney Lipson. As far as I can tell, and as far as he could tell, he uh, never recorded. But he did uh, keep his own collection of um, of his own uh, 78s for a while. Uh, well, that's been in the family forever. But Mike, he didn't know what to do with them by that point and didn't have much use for them. But he uh, he knew that he wanted to give them away to somebody that appreciate them. Just so happened that uh, while I was working at my job and uh, she came in asking about uh, luggage and other things like that, we ended up talking and I got into a discussion of how, you know, FedEx, um, you know, how FedEx uh, mistreats their boxes and everything and throwing them all over the place. And I mean, and I was like, yeah, I can, I can relate to that. I deal with old 78 RPM records. They, uh, you know, they go in the boxes and everything, and FedEx just uh, throw them everywhere, and a lot of times they end up breaking if you don't pack them right, of course, but that's where that went. And he's like, oh, well, I have I got this stuff, and uh, I've been meaning to get this to somebody. Like, I'm not I'm not going to have any use for them. But, um, so, yeah, he's a nice guy there. And, um, yeah, and I'm going to end up... Uh, and I'm like sending him some stuff that I found on him as well. But these records are now mine here. But this is something truly unique here. And now I'll actually get into the contents of the bag. About uh, 19 I counted. 78s here. Um, all in different segments here. I'll just go from what's on top then first. But... This is all his own personal collection, which is somewhat rare to come across. An actual person who was big back in the day, even if regionally, um, his, like being able to see what their own personal uh, taste in music was like. So I guess um, he was, I guess this was one of the records he liked there. The, you'd think it'd be an album, but as far as I can tell, this is a 78 from like the... Uh, early 50s um military marches galloping horses um high stepping horses um other stuff like that this seems like this is a sound effects record i'm not sure but he said that his uh you know that uh since uh sydney lips and mickey tool was his grandfather um his father um, used to mess around with the records and apparently was throwing away the sleeves at some point and um, would also end up putting them in different um, sleeves and whatnot. Or, however, it's like uh, they, some of them they do have original sleeves still there, and I can tell because it seems apparently Mickey wrote on them. But it's it's interesting to see. Like this is well, this is the first Peter Pan I think I've ever seen down here in Florida, but. Um, I've never been much for for that stuff, but you know, of course it's um it's his. So with that uh Lincoln School, I believe that says there. And yeah. Of course any of these records here if you wanna hear them, um, I'll definitely put them up. It uh kinda reminds me of if you know there's this one guy over on uh, um who's related to the band leader Tiny Hill of the thirties or fifties. Uh the Tiny Hill uh, senior music collection, I believe, has his own 78s of his father, uh, who would be the senior of the actual Tiny Hill himself, of all of his records that he'd play and get inspiration off of. Maybe the same deal here with this stuff. 
uh, since he was a pianist, um, but other things like that. Um, you know, Rosemary Elizabeth Lennox with the Crescent Trio. It's I've never really seen really any um, Brunswick stuff like this. Usually you'll see stuff like this on Victor, uh, this sort of stuff there, of, um, like that. But this is this is early Brunswick. Here's another example here, and they're in fairly good condition too. So I imagine these weren't played much phonographically. So um, uh, O'Toole probably played these mostly on uh, on newer machines than that I'd imagine. Who knows how and when he obtained these records, but considering that these Brunswick's here are clearly early 20s here, perhaps they were in his family and he just got them passed down. So this could be, until I'm getting them now, uh, per potentially four generations of owners. Uh, just right down to here uh, from that the own the stuff. Uh, but yeah. Victor here, a bit of it is, uh, the chip is, there's been a bit of a chip out of it, likely because there was in a, uh, well, because someone tried to pick it up at this, like this at some point, and, well, that's what happens with Slack. So that's, uh, yep, Nat Shilker, as we all know, um, when you and I were 17 and yearning, oh, so that's, what, 1924 there, got to be, 1924, maybe 25? early 25 still acoustic but then we shift on forward back in the 40s again with um i want to say 45 44 capital here from an album the church is one foundation and um uh, he leadeth me but yeah um whatever ends up happening with this collection i mean for the stuff that i can't find that has sleeves i'm just going to be putting new sleeves onto um but if I ever end up parting with the stuff, I'm going to try and make sure that it all stays in one, um, all together. But I doubt that I will just because it's so unique. Uh, Mike ended up just writing down part of this, but then ended up giving up halfway through. Uh, but the thought that counts, and I got the record actually here. So, let's see, Doris Day, he was in Doris Day. Uh, you Are My Sunshine, and... Uh, the comb paper polka. Uh, yeah. Floyd Tillman, which I've said this probably three times to people explain this now, but pretty sure that um, Floyd Tillman had something to do with country, but I don't know. I've only ever heard the name, but still not looked into him at all. These are the tops here. He has several tops here by Bob Sandy, and this is the International Cowboy, so that's likely country there as well. And this seems to be what I would assume to be his handwriting, um, uh, Mickey O'Toole stuff. What it says is beyond me. I think this is a little bit more than cursive. This is perhaps chicken scratch. I don't know. Uh, but it's on a mercury here, on a mercury sleeve, but... So far, I've not been able to see any um, any Mercury records uh, through this. Whenever I've, I mean, there, there's just none out there. So this uh, likely indicates there were more at some point. Uh, he said that he swore there was more out there. Uh, Mike did, but he's looked through the house and he's not been able to find any more. Jerry Wayne, uh, good stuff. Mid forties here. Google Waltz. Don't know that much. Uh, well, if he was a fan of anybody over the radio, there was the big band leaders of the time in the 40s, he most definitely was a, uh, a Sammy K fan. Which, yeah, mm, this may even be early 50s here. I'm not really too much of a uh, one for understanding, uh, most for studying the, uh, the Red Label Columbia um, variants. But see how this says tops here. So this must have been for one of the actual top records there, which um, further indicates what I was saying before. Another Mercury sleeve here. And an and Ace High Hits is another label I've not heard of before. 
But um, but there's this one here, Bobby Doyle and Neely Plum, um, outside of heaven. Another tops here. I've only had one tops before, but uh, a Vita thing, sweetheart. This song came back into popularity around 50 or 51. And same thing for the flip here, which is maybe. Yes, the same maybe that is, uh, you know, Ink Spot's fame. And then um, the new Dixie Rhythm Kings, I believe, in the mid 30s recorded this as well. Uh, or so, some, some sort of name like that. With Arcea Victor, I bet. This you know this this is most definitely for that that RCA Victor um, um, sound effects thing. I've not heard any of these records yet, but uh, the sound effects thing I'm guessing uh, probably came in this sleeve here. And then the um, then the Batwing there, uh, Nat Shoker stuff, more than likely came in this. And with some writing on here, N O N O T maybe not. I don't know. On the other side, it says, uh, it says good record, uh, or good records, I guess, uh, for the victor there. And I guess that's, that's, uh, the end of what has been salvaged of his musical collection. But it's very, it's like seeing stuff like this, you, you don't end up finding someone's full collection and, uh, such a personal degree like this. Um, really ever. You don't want to find this, I mean, I mean, maybe once in a while you'll come across it. I mean, I've seen stuff where I've uh, been dumpster diving and I've found a lot by this one guy named Bob Stein that had a ton of capital stuff where he had stickers and whatnot where he just put, um, where he just had this little intricate design and whatnot. Clearly a jazz fan. Um, not sorry, jazz fan. A swing fan and a uh, a big Stan Kenton fan, so there's that. But that's um, that's for Bob Stein, nowhere near. But um, as for Mickey, uh, Mickey O'Toole, that's uh, that's his records there, and I'll I'll definitely be putting these up at some point. Please let me know if there's any particular ones you'd want to hear first. Majority of them seem to be in good quality, and yeah. Oh, and unrelated to this collection, the same day. I ended up finding this thing at a Goodwill while looking for some furniture. A 12 inch um, 78 Presto here of radio broadcast stuff that I'll definitely put up here of over in Guam. About this time, probably 80 years ago, up to 79 years ago, about this time, since right after this time is um, whenever we took, uh, it's right about now when we actually took guam back from the japanese interestingly enough it has a uh has actual a embossed label on here i've never seen before in a matrix too 1004 but yeah other than that yeah um thanks for watching if you have up until this point uh truly unique thing i can't really say much more upon this but yeah i'll end up looking more into mickey tool uh for him and if you guys are curious and wanting to know and see more about Mickey O'Toole, um, perhaps we can end up doing something. I mean, definitely for my own sense of posterity and good conscience and everything, I'm definitely going to mine this guy for as much info as I can about such a uh, forgotten leader um, and pianist and whatnot. He, um, he's already told me some good stories and whatnot. Who knows? Uh, let me know what you think of this, and I will definitely uh, respond to that feedback. But yeah, other than that, thanks for watching this thing. I hope to see you guys down uh, in the comments below or in the next video. This is C. Porter signing off.